I always find that you have to be a bit mad to become a stone carver. I mean, this isn't the Renaissance anymore. Stone isn't a primary building material anymore. Why, why would you go into an industry? Why would you go into a profession that is expensive and takes a lot of time and the material is heavy and hard to move and it is expensive to obtain even before you do anything to it. Um, and then after that, even after you've made something out of it, you have to convince people that this is a worthwhile endeavor. Um, but I always find that the answer to that question is always that there just wasn't any other, any other option. Once the idea of becoming a stone carver comes into your head, then you just have to find some way of doing it. Every, every project will usually start with a sketch of some kind. Um, and if you're lucky enough to have a live model, then it will start with a clay model. So if it's a head, you'll find all of the prominences, the sort of absolute prominences. You'll find the tips of the ears, you'll find the nose, you'll find the chin, you'll find where the underhang of the jaw comes down, you'll find where the sternal notch comes in, you'll find the top of the head. You'll find sort of the slope to the nose and usually the slope to the chin and all the sort of angles that make up a human face, a sort of geometric head, if you will. The clay, when you do a clay model of someone, that's where you're working out the idea and you're getting acquainted with their face and you're talking to them and looking at them. And that's really what it's about, is just looking. A lot of people don't recognize the fact that clay is quite, it's an easy substance, it's soft, it's, you can move it around very fast, you can build it up really fast and then take it away really fast. And so there is no point in being precious about it. If you make a mistake, you, shouldn't, you can just discard that and start again and it won't take that long. If you can imagine doing something, if you have the skills to do it, you can pretty much execute anything that you want. And that, that transition from your imagination um, through your eyes and your hands into a block of stone uh, is the most incredible feeling. Stone carvers are often taught that simply carving something in stone is enough that that sheer ability to take something that's been cut from the earth and create something beautiful with it is enough. And that isn't something that is shared by any other kind of artist. Once you start, <laughs> once you start carving this, there is there is no sort of hard and fast rules. You rely on the fact that you can look and measure, and that you have an instinct for this, and that if you can look at something and translate it into your hands, and then make the chisels do what you want it to do, then you'll be okay. If you're doing the clay, or if you're doing the transition from the clay into the stone. Often my brain is quite, not chaotic, but you're making so many decisions, probably until the sort of last day that you're working on it. Your brain is just constantly making decisions of like, am I, have I taken that too low? Like, what am I doing? Like, what measurement is that? Like, where is this? Everything is just sort of going through your mind very, very fast. And you don't, you're not even aware that it's happening. Um, but then you finish the day and you're exhausted and you wonder why. And 
the sound that it makes is incredibly satisfying. Um, a lot of people who aren't carvers comment on that, and that feeling of a like well sharpened chisel going into stone smoothly and cleanly, and that tr transition of looking at a stone and telling your hands to do something, and then tr your hands telling a chisel and a mallet to do something, and then have it take off exactly the right amount of stone, have it do exactly what you want to do, is the most satisfying feeling. On a human face, even though there's a change in pigment, there's no end. Like, you come to the edge of the lips and it just carries on going. And if you try and make it a stark difference, then the face will look strange. The skin is sort of a continuous surface that undulates and has tension in certain places and slack in other places. It takes a long time to train to be a stone carver and it's not an easy job once you are trained and you're still learning. I, I'm still learning with every job that I do. I learn something new and I will hopefully continue to learn. And that seems to be the payoff that once you've created something, it has, it takes up a physical space in the world and it, it has a permanence that will hopefully outlast you and it's not vulnerable either. I want people to see that I've pushed the material as far as it can possibly go. I maybe want people to see themselves in it. I want them maybe to wonder uh, about my reasons for carving it. I want people to have, I want people to maybe argue about why I made it in the way that I did and have different ideas of what the reason is and the purpose.